Yeah. All right. Yeah. Notice is hereby given that a continuance hearing will be held at 7 p.m. on June 10th, 2020 in the H. Bernard, well, uh, Level Level Town Hall to the, on the petition filed under Chapter 40B Comprehensive Permit by Shingle Mill LLC, care of Conoco, uh, 41st, 41st Street, Bridgewater, Mass, 02324 to allow the construction of 236 units of residential housing, the project, mm -hmm. within two five-story buildings on approximately 29.33 acres of land located at Zero Pond Street and 152 Wilson Street, uh, the site. The applicant is proposing 25% of the units be classified as affordable as per MGL Chapter 40B. The site is located on Zero Pond Street, Lot 13, Map 9, and 152 Wilson Street, Lot 68 on Map 10. A copy of this application is on file at the town clerk's office and is available for inspection during regular office hours. So for, the, for everyone that didn't hear, uh, there was, I guess, a misadvertisement. It was advertised as uh, being started at 7.30. So uh, before we open the public hearing, I guess what we're going to do is we're going to say that we're going to start at 7.30. Um, so I guess there's going to be a little downtime. Um, I don't, Mr. Galvin, I don't need a vote for this, do I? No, because the agenda actually says 7.30. So okay. you want to comply with your published agenda. I'd like to do that. Even though you, um, even though you announced that it would be at seven, the agenda is at seven thirty. And after discussion with uh, Attorney Marioni, who represents the applicant, and I think Mr. Lincoln concurred that we will start the presentation at seven thirty. So my recommendation is you had a couple of matters that were um, on your agenda that didn't have a time. For mm -hmm. example, the approval of meeting minutes. Yep. Um, you have a quorum of your board present why don't you approve your meeting minutes and um i think ms barrett is here if you want to try to schedule a session with her while everybody's on the line that would be fine um that'll be just uh that won't be a public meeting that'll just be a uh, meeting with ms barrett to review 40b law and procedure and um you could maybe schedule that and then we'll just uh, wait until 7.30 and start the meet, start the uh, hearing. Sounds right. good to me. Uh, I would uh, entertain a, uh, assuming that everybody's read them, I would, uh, I would entertain a, uh, a motion to approve uh, the current meeting, uh, the current minutes. I'll make the motion. April, the minutes. April 4th. Minutes. From April 4th. Of April 4th. All right, I got a fur and I got a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Uh, I got a second for Mr. Tanzi. Uh, got to do roll call. Uh, Mr. Baker? Yeah. Myself, yes. Mr. Hessian? Yes. Mr. Haynes? Yes. And Mr. Tanzi? Yes. That's five. Uh, so minutes have been approved. Judy, how you doing? Rob, there's also a set of minutes for the meeting held on March 4th. Okay. Attached to those. The, that I did not. That I did not see. Let me let me just pull them out and review them real quick. Make sure, uh, make sure your other board members have them too. Third page. Let me grab. Let me go grab that. I got it. It's on the other side of the room. Um, boy, and everybody else. Everybody else saw that. Yes. I didn't see that. So. Okay. The third page in. If I read, if everybody, if everybody's read them, um, then I would entertain a motion. Motion to approve the minutes of March fourth, twenty twenty. Got a motion. Need a second. I'll second it. I got a second. Uh, roll call vote. Mr. Baker. Yes. Myself. Yes. Mr. Hessian. Yes. Mr. Haynes. Yes. Mr. Tanzi. Yes. Five all. Uh, is there any uh, anything uh, any any other business we want to talk about before we talk to Judy? I'll take that as a no. Let's go back to let's go back to Judy. How you doing? 
Put your mic on. Uh, <laughs> she's the, she's the, it's as bad as I am. I should know by now. I do this. There we go. Almost every night. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so first of all, I apologize to everybody for forgetting to schedule the training. That is totally on me. I, I think I just blitzed out. Um, but do you want to schedule something now? Because uh, it probably be, probably need about an hour, Rob. Probably an hour to go through it. Yeah. What? Uh, what? I guess what works for everybody else. And yeah. I know that most of us are dead, have day jobs. I know right. I do. Oh um, yeah, I would do it at night. I wouldn't. Oh. So, if I, and I, I just I would need a I would need some idea of what's available to to the board for times. Okay. I mean, I'll just throw out a date and see. Okay. What people say. Um, are you folks by chance available on say Tuesday night the thirtieth? I'm good. I can make myself available. How many? How many of you? How many? I've yeah. 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 Yep. That works. That's that works for everybody. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Tuesday night, the thirtieth. Uh, what time? Uh, what time what do we, like? we do it? Do we do we want to say six o'clock? What's, what's comfortable for everybody? If you want to go yeah. home and have dinner first, and then do this, it's fine. Six thirty would be a little better. All right, so six thirty works. Everybody else. Yep. Do you check with Kim. Do we have a meeting that night, the thirtieth? I don't think so, Kim. Okay. Kim, can you voice up? No meeting. No meeting. Thank you. Okay. So do we use the town's Zoom for this or mine? Because I have a Zoom account as well, and I could just invite you to it. But um, Judy, Judy because yeah. this won't be a public meeting. So why don't they use your Zoom account and you That's can fine. email the Zoom directions. And um you know there's no deliberation going on it's just an educational training session so um that no 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 agenda that's that's fine yep. so um I, that was my thinking too bob so i'll send all of you um a zoom invite we'll lock yep. it in and that makes it easier for me to do the screen share and all that so do you have you have everybody's email address or would you, you i'll get know, it i'll get I can, it because i can forward it to you i have a i have a email chain going so that would be super if you do that then i can just send that out all right. Thank you. All right. So I'll you in my book now. All right. So June thirtieth, six thirty p.m. Everybody's yep. good. Okay. Thank you for your. Make picture, sure. Guys. Make sure you tell uh, the missing member as well. Absolutely. And then Rob, I just suggest you, you just recess until seven thirty, and if everybody wants to take a bathroom break or you know get a refreshment, then we'll just start promptly at seven thirty and. Begin right with the applicant. All right. I think we're good to go. Uh, 7.30, I would entertain a motion to open the public hearing. I'll make the motion to... There we go, Mr. Hessian. I need a second. I'll second it. Yeah, Mr. Tanzi, you got a second. Uh, I need a roll call. Mr. Baker? Yes. Myself is yes. Mr. Tanzi? Yes. Mr. Haynes? Yes. Mr. Hessian? Yes. That's all five. Uh, good to go. Um, all right. Let's see. All right. Just so we can remember where we were the last time. Uh, voting members at the time. Let's see. The voting members were voting members were myself. Stan Cleves, Mr. Tanzi, Mr. Haynes, and Mr. Saucier. Uh, at this time, Mr. Cleves is no longer with the board, so I need to put somebody else on here. Um, okay, if I if I may, Bob, I had to recuse myself. All right, so you're it's a, we're still recusing. Yes. And formally, we I don't remember if formally we did that at the meeting. Did you did you do the whole yes I recuse myself? Yes, I recuse myself from this hearing uh, due to a conflict with the being on the civil commission. All right, Mr. Mr. Hessian, that's taken care of. Uh, Mr. Saucier is still technically a voting member, uh, so we default to Mr. Baker. Uh, uh, you up for the task, sir? Yes, sir. All right, so we got uh, you're going to take um, you're going to take Mr. Cleve's space on that. Um, all right, meeting rules. Uh, it's pretty simple. We've done this before. 
uh, we let the applicant uh, explain the explain the 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 process that they're going through. Um, talk about the talk about the the application. Talk about the site. Uh, then we open it up to uh, board questions. We open it up to uh, legal uh, legal counsel questions. Um, typically, the uh, the building inspector, the the zoning enforcement officer. He's usually here, uh, and I think he will. He he may be here at the at the next meeting. I don't know if he. I don't know if uh, I don't know if he's stepping away for tonight. I'm not positive. Um, after that, we usually open up to uh, our review agent, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brennan. Um, so we get his. Uh, so we get his ideas on it. Uh, we go back and forth a little bit, and then uh, we open it up to the public. The public need, needs to remain quiet while this happens. Uh, it's it's a these Zoom meetings can be very difficult, uh, and I request that you mute yourselves and listen to what we have to say. And then when it's all said and done, we can uh, when I open it up to questions from uh, from the audience, uh, then we can start taking questions after that. Bob, if I may, one quick question for Mr. Galvin. Please, sir. If I have a question or a comment, do I have to refrain from saying that? Where I recuse the yes. meeting. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I'll mute myself out for this. I appreciate it, sir. Uh, Mr. Roser, I would just recommend that you also include uh, Ms. Barrett uh, with any thoughts that she has as the application comes in. Uh, when you go to me or you go to um, Mr. Brennan, I think we should include Ms. Barrett in there, and maybe even her before you come to me or to Mr. Brennan. Absolutely, sir. I appreciate that. That's why I was. That's why I asked her to, if she was coming today because I know we're going to be relying on her. So, if uh, if nobody else has any questions or comments at this point, I'm going to open it up to whoever's doing the presentation. I don't know who that is. I think he's going to start with Attorney Marioni, and then he'll uh, he'll uh, lead the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the last hearing, we had agreed that um, Amory would be retained as peer review consultant. And um, after the meeting, Amory submitted their proposal. The proposal was agreed upon um, by the applicant. The proposal was funded by the applicant. Um, the applicant while that was going on, the applicant's engineers had developed some revised plans based upon input of um, town departments, town boards, and those plans were submitted to Amory, uh, and that's where the peer review began. Um, those plans were submitted in multiple sets, um, I believe hard copies, to the board secretary. Um, I recently provided copies of those plans electronically to Judy Barrett um, and to Attorney Galvin. Um, from our perspective, I think what we would like to do is turn the meeting over to uh, Rick Lincoln at this point, um, unless Rick's, Rick, I don't know if Conoco, if there's an engineer here from Conoco to um, give some background as to um, that set of plans that are now presently under review by Amory. Sure, I don't know if John Novak is on, but I, I can certainly go through it. Um, and I apologize, I wasn't around for the first meeting, but um, I'm, I'm good to go now. Uh, essentially, we only changed uh, the building footprints and layout up on the top of the site. Nothing else changed. So we really didn't change parking ratios, we didn't really change the outside perimeter of the asphalt, um, we didn't change any of the access, um, you know, the intersection there with Pond Street, uh, the fire access over there on Wilson Street. So these changes were essentially precipitated by um, the fire department's disappointment with the first plan as far as emergency access all the way around the buildings. and. Um, the first plan had these U-shaped buildings and that didn't work well with trying to get some of their um, 
apparatus, you know, inside that U, it wouldn't have worked at all. Um, so the, the engineers did quite a bit of work. There was a lot of back and forth. And this plan, the new plan that um, you see now, was sent to uh, the fire department. And we already received some comments from them. Uh, a couple of the comments we've already addressed. There, was, there were two more comments that um, they're very detailed, you know, Knox box locations and stuff like that. And generally that gets addressed when we're, um, you know, we're almost uh, submitting for building permit. Uh, so I think uh, at least the, uh, with the fire department, we're in pretty good shape. Um, and the rest uh, we, we got, we received, there was an awful lot of um, engineering to go through on Amory's part. So we just, we received some early comments uh, which were just more detail in nature. Um, and then we received their letter, uh, I think yesterday or the day before. So um, the cer certainly we'll need some time for the engineers to kind of chat back and forth and kind of um, take care of the comments. Um, but the building um, statistics remain the same. So two five-story buildings and 236 units and um, similar one-bedroom, two-bedroom um, percentages so nothing nothing really changed much um, up top other than other than footprints understood um, mr. Lincoln did we did we say that your uh, that your engineer is not present I don't his name is I see, John I see his, he's he's here okay and is I see an it's John Novak? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, is there any way to get Mr. Novak on the, on the horn here? It looks like he's, I don't know if he's listening. Because I'd, I'd, I'd kind of like to have the engineer walk us through. Um, usually what it did when it comes to engineering questions uh, or engineering concern, we like, to, we like to hear from the engineer. So I don't know if we can kind of get him get him rolling or can somebody text him or does he have the ability to share his screen and kind of walk the board through the project mr. Lincoln because the public is also basically hearing about this project for the first time tonight even though there's been a prior hearing we basically just opened it and continued it so I think he's basically asking your if your engineer has the ability to kind of display the project on the plans if we allow him to share his screen and kind of walk everybody through the proposed project so is he is he being invited I'm not familiar with zoom so he is if you he's on the I see a John no I see a John Novak but okay. it almost looks like he's calling in so I don't know why don't we give him a minute or two before I if I call him I may completely mess him up but he's, he's done a, a bunch of Zoom meetings before with, you know, various towns and so forth. Understood. I think, he, I think he's familiar with it. Uh, he looks like he's a, he's a telephone caller that is muted right at the moment. Yeah. I don't know if that's... If Who, that's Rob, who's in charge? Who's the administrator of this meeting? Can they un... Uh, that would be Lisa, I think. Yep, I've been pressing the ask to unmute button. Um, he has to do that on his own side. Okay. Sorry. I'll, I'll text him right now. Sounds good. You gotta love this stuff, huh? <clears throat> It looks like he's unmuted, Mr. Novak. You guys got me now? Ah, oh, good. Yeah. Got you now, Mr. Novak. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Yeah, my, my audio crashed right as I was signing in, so I'm on the phone. 
So no, it's, uh, uh, that's understood. So you don't. So you're not going to have. You're not going to have the ability to share screen or anything like that. Uh, no, I mean I can. Um, I have. Uh, that's not the right one. The, the, it's just the computer audio that uh, that cracked. So this is the uh, the plan set that was uh, sent to the town. Um, that's fully designed. Uh, you guys had the um, the previous design. What we have done, uh, as Mr. Lincoln said, is we kept. Can everybody see the cursor? Yes, sir. Okay, so we kept the entrance the same coming in off the Pond Street. Um, obviously, the two buildings themselves converted from U shape to an L shape and a straight strike. Um, we are still at the 1.25 ratio uh, for the 236 units. We have uh, 296 parking spots. There is a clubhouse area um, over here. Um, there are, as you come in along the road, um, we do have retaining walls on either side, guardrails. Um, the entrance is uh, the it's Cape Cod curbing along, uh, and then we have uh, parking all around pretty much the perimeter. The During discussions with the uh, fire department, they kind of wanted the fire access to be a little bit pulled away from the buildings. And then uh, based on those site constraints, uh, we did everything we could do to get uh, as much around the building as we could. Obviously, since this pinch point with the um, wetland, we couldn't go all the way through. So we have access around the vast majority of the sites. Um, this area back here, um, the fire access will actually be able to come down and they'll be able to come back out here. Uh, the site as designed meets all of the uh, mass DEP stormwater standards. Uh, I'll go through that in a minute. Um, our current proposal is uh, to take um, the fire access to kind of close off the road here so that, that people will come back. But this is going to be an emergency fire access as well uh, with breakaway gates. <clears throat> the, for the drainage capabilities, we're going to have a uh, aligned rain garden at the front, which will capture uh, this portion. Then what will happen is that it will have, there is a culvert that goes underneath the roadway here. It will actually, um, Discharge overflow through the culvert and then our emergency. I'm sorry. That's the emergency overflow. It will actually tie directly into the culvert and then come straight through. Um, and then the remainder of the roadway and the full site will be captured in areas of catch basins uh, and then directed through uh, proprietary stormwater separators uh, into a subsurface infiltration facility here and then another rain garden out back. Um, we are in a, uh, I believe in ACEC, so we are going to be 44% um, to pre-treatment. And we, it's, uh, it, it's a fairly um, expansive system, but it, it's, uh, it captures everything, there's no, additional flows coming off of the site to the neighbors. Um, there is uh, a little bit of floodplain impact, which based on the elevation of the um, the site, it was going to be compensated out back here. Um, I know that we have filed a notice of intent, which I believe the meeting is the 14th. Um, and that is going to be the only resource area that's impacted. We're outside of um, the state jurisdiction for the wetland facility. Um, Pat Brennan and I uh, had a couple quick conversations regarding some of his preliminary comments. We've gone ahead and started to address some of those 
Um, there's nothing um, in the letter that was issued recently that I think is a, a major hurdle to get over. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of making sure we've identified um, everything that's been done. And I know that we had we provided the turning radiuses of the largest vehicles for the fire to, uh, uh, fire uh, trucks to come in, so which is why we kind of have the larger radiuses uh, coming in through the, the entrance. Uh, we can provide those. We will provide those to the to Amory as well as uh, the, uh, you guys if you need to see them. And then it, there's uh, there's really not much else. It's it's a lot of retaining walls, a lot of fill. We re we maintain our groundwater separation. Um, like I said, I don't I don't think there's anything in the comment letter that we read that uh, is a going to be a, a drastic change to the site. We have gone through and started um, looking at, and we will be providing pedestrian access, um, which along this roadway to tie into the future sidewalk that uh, may or may not be happening on Pond Street. Um, but we, in the next revision that you get, there will be a sidewalk that from Pond Street up in up into the the site. So currently the um, <coughs> The currently the water, gas, electric will be coming in from Pond Street, and then it will be a loop connection right through back out to Wilson, uh, and then the sewer will be um, captured on site and then connected into the sewer main in Wilson. Uh, that is the current design, and then if the water and sewer department want to modify that, we can have the discussion uh, with them. I know that. For sewer, there's uh, only four main up in Pond Street, so it's a little bit of an adventure to get um, gravity from where we are to an area um, that we actually can accept gravity. Okay. <clears throat> right. Um, normally, we open it up to. Uh, the board members for comments or questions. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to start with, obviously we're gonna start with Judy first. Um, see if she's got any comments at this point. And is she here? There she is right there. She's on mute, gotta unmute yourself. There, there we go. go. All right guys. Um, this process is a little bit different than I'm used to in some other communities, so I need to ask, um, does the board have the comments from the fire department, from police, from the various town departments? I just haven't yeah. seen them, so. Oh, okay. Uh, I just want to make sure you have them. I haven't right. seen them either. All right, they, they, have been, they, they have been circled around. Um, the two big comments that the two the two big uh, comment letters that I'm looking at are number one from the highway department yeah. and number two from Amory engineers but it sounds like that Conoco already has these and they're in the process of modifying them based on all of the uh, based on all of the comment letters that have been received mr. Novak is that correct yeah we in an effort to make sure that uh, we were running down the right path uh, why we reached out to Emory to, to make sure they had enough information and then we, that he gave us some pre his preliminary comments uh, we wanted to if we were going to get into anything that was hectic we just decided to kind of address those all right because I have a I have a letter dated June 10th uh, today yeah. um, I, uh, I have that too I guess what I'm concerned about in particular is it sounds like there's been discussions with the fire department and I haven't seen anything that the board may have received in writing from the fire department. So it's just very important to make sure that whatever the applicant's representing, you have that on record in your files. And if you don't, we need to chase it down. Mr. Novak, uh, is that something that you can provide? I, because I, again, I don't have that in my package here. Right. Mr. Brandon. Yeah, that, that, that came in, I think, uh, potentially beginning of the week, uh, in the last week. They were wanted to confirm hydrant locations and then the apparatus turning movements, uh, which okay. we provided, which again we'll provide to the. Uh, I didn't want to load you guys up with the stuff at the last minute. We will provide them in the next submission, though. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and then but we can provide the request to you guys beforehand as well. Do you Pat, do you have a copy of do you have a copy of Amory Engineers uh, June tenth um, comment letter? Are you asking yes. Mr. Mr. Novak? Yes, we just yeah, we just received that today. Okay. Have you reviewed it? Yes, we took uh, we took a look at it this afternoon. Okay. Um, maybe we should think about going over this. I mean, there, there's there's significant. I look at this and I granted the it, it is a it is a rather large project, uh, like rather large project, but this is a significant amount of um, concerns. Uh, yeah, there's many. Mr. Mr. Ro Mr. Rosa, I think. And I don't want to speak for Ms. Barrett, but I think she was trying to make sure that the board's record yep. is complete mm -hmm. so that what you have for the board to consider is the same as what the applicant may have got also directly from the fire chief. No, I, so, I, I appreciate that. Um, it would be nice so, to get it would be nice to get a copy. So uh, based on Mr. Brennan's review letter dated June, <coughs> the board should have a copy of the comprehensive permit submission package it should have a 24 page set of permit plans dated may 14th by conoco mm -hmm. it should have a stormwater management report dated may 14 2020 by conoco mm -hmm. the board should have a copy of the project eligibility letter for mass housing dated february 19 2020 it should have an email from Mr. David Taylor at the Highway Department dated April 3rd, 2020. Mm -hmm. A memo from John Laughlin at the Sewer Superintendent, March 18, 2020. You should have an email from Jack Egan, April 7th, 2020. A letter, uh, or it says letters from Virginia Hoffman dated March 27th, June 6, 2020. An email and a letter from John Wojner dated April 4th, 2020. And emails from Sheila Duquette dated April 6th and 7th, 2020. The board should have all of those. All that should be in the board's record. Thank you, Attorney Galvin. I've got all that. I've got all that. So it looks like the only thing I'm missing is, at least I'm the only thing that I'm missing is the letter from the, the fire department. So I haven't gotten any of that. Okay, there's two. Um, uh, Bob, neither have I. Okay, so we're mid. Apparently, we're missing a lot. Um, yeah. Mr. Novak, can you unshare your screen for a second? Sure. All right. I'm just gonna go. I want to go into my email here because there, this this started coming through. Everything started coming through via email in separate in separate packages. Uh, and the other thing was I went to, it should have been listed on it. This should have been put up on the town website, but I didn't, I didn't see it there. Um, I didn't either, Mr. Chairman. That was where I first looked. And let me just get back there for a second. La, 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 la. There it is right there. Yeah, the I mean, in, in, in terms of tonight, Mr. Rosa, I don't think it's critical that the board have them all tonight because it's going to be more a continued public hearing on this oh, matter. Yeah. But I just want to make sure that we've identified what the other board members haven't seen and what's properly a part of the record so that we make sure that when it comes time to your deliberation that you have everything and you've read everything and when you're making your judgments about the project, you you're, you're prepared. I think Mr. Brennan's letter probably details a number of other things that he thinks are necessary to be submitted, and we can talk about that too. But um, you know, I really thought tonight would be a good opportunity for the for the applicant to come here, basically say, "Hey, look at this is why we have a project that can come to the board. This is our project." Um, if the board had some preliminary questions, I think it would be a great thing for the board to ask those questions and then mm -hmm. think judy uh, barrett can ask some questions i certainly will ask some questions that might prompt other things uh we get some risk back and forth between us and the applicant and, and and try to make as much progress as we can in a in a in a meeting 
Absolutely, Ed, and it's absolutely understood. Um, I just didn't, again, I see a lot of I see a lot of comments here that um, maybe it's too early to even talk about them. Mr. Mr. Brennan has done a, a fabulous a fabulous job here, and I think the applicant would need time to uh, kind of respond to these comments. Um, oh, without a doubt, without a uh, doubt, the applicant would be given a very a reasonable period of time and. They'll tell us how long they need, and yeah, you know. Um, but I, but I think for purposes of tonight, to have as if Mr. Brennan's present, to have him be able to walk through this with the board, um, so the board can ask questions, would probably be a very good use of your time. I, I, I tend to agree, Mr. Brennan. Are you, uh, are you uh, okay to do this? Sure, I can, I can walk through the letter. Um, I don't know that I'll walk through every single comment, but maybe hit the more. Um, it's your major concern, sir. The more important ones, yeah. Thank you. Um, and I apologize for getting the letter out only today. It, it's it was a it was a lot of information to go through, and it's been a busy couple of months here. So that's understood. Um, so basically, starting out with my comments, um, their waiver list um, they list specific waivers from some of your zoning bylaws, but they don't actually um list exactly what relief they're looking for mm -hmm. um, so i think it's important for the board to know exactly what relief they're looking for so hey there's a 50 foot setback required and they only have 15 feet it, that's that's the type of thing that we want them to list so that you know what the you know what the ramification of granting those waivers may be um the i think the first waiver it appears that they're they're asking for a waiver to not have to submit a notice from intent to conservation. And that, that's a state requirement it cannot be waived under 40 B. Um, my third comment under those is um, if this were not a 40 B project, it would require site plan review um, from the planning board and your site plan review requirements um, tie everything into the subdivision regulations in terms of design standards and construction specifications. So they haven't listed any waivers that's requesting from those. I, I've identified a couple of my letter that they, they, they would need to uh, request, um, but they just need to go through those regulations as well to tell us where they don't comply. Um, then under my general comments, and I, I think my, you know, the one real main thing that I want to get out to the board is that, um, you know, in my letter, in my description up top, I, I explained the project and I note that the entire site is being constructed and filled. Um, if you look at the retaining walls that are on the perimeter of the site on the, on the grading plans, which are uh, 13 and 14, and you look at the, the notes that say top of wall, bottom of wall, this entire site is coming up a minimum of 10 feet. So that's 10 feet of fill coming over this entire site. Um, that's a lot of material coming in here, a lot of truck traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of my questions was, um, we're at, I'm asking them to provide us with a, a mass balance to tell us exactly how much fill is coming in and estimated truck um, trips and that type of thing. So that you know what that traffic impact is going to be during construction because um, it's a large area with 10 plus feet of fill. It's a ton, that's an enormous amount of fill coming in. <laughs> um, it's a triaxle every five minutes. It, for a long time. <laughs> uh, the, um, some of the retaining walls, uh, as I said, because the fill's 10 feet, they're, they're, uh, most of them are 10 to 13, up to 13 and a half feet. Um, I think Mr. Ruble can probably chime in, but I think anything over 30 inches, they're going to require some type of a railing or fall protection on those walls. Um, the, I, I think the, um, some of the retaining walls are right against the wetland line. So it'd be nice to know exactly what type of retaining wall that they're proposing. So we know if they can actually construct those without disturbing the wetlands. Um, and there's some areas where they have guardrails, you know, the entrance road is lined with guardrails. There's some guardrails shown around the parking areas, but there's other areas where um, the parking areas are adjacent to retaining walls and there's no guardrail. And I, I really think you need guardrails there. Otherwise, you, you know, 
you have the potential for cars going right off those retaining walls. Um, Mr. Novak had mentioned about the, uh, I've asked for an analysis for the, um, to demonstrate that the Rockland Fire Department's largest apparatus can maneuver around the site without any issues. Um, Mr. Novak mentioned um, my comment nine under the general was about no pedestrian access from the site out to Pond Street. Um, you know, I, I, I think sidewalks should be considered. I know he mentioned that they are, um, they are going to propose sidewalks on the, on the next submittal. Um, you know, that's a long, um, a long roadway through the woods, so they probably need some lighting along that roadway too for pedestrians if they're walking out there at night. Um, the, the dumpster that is west of the smaller building, which is the straight building on the southern part of the site, um, with the configuration of the site, I think it's very difficult for, for a truck to get down and access that dumpster. So that's something that I've asked them to look at. Um, um, I, I think we need a, a lighting plan for the exterior lighting, because obviously these parking areas would be lit up at night. Um, there is a good woods buffer around the uh, proposed area or the area that's proposed for development, so I don't think there's going to be an issue with the the lighting impacts on abutters. But um, you know, we we ask that of every applicant that comes in to provide us with lighting plans that show that there will not be any light trespass onto abutters that would cause a nuisance. Um, I've asked for documentation uh, to demonstrate that there's adequate water supply for domestic use and fire flow. Um, the, one of the things that I'd highlight is they are proposing to loop the water main coming in along their access road um, and looping it back to the end of Wilson Street. So that, that will help them enormously with the water. Or it'll prevent the long dead end. So that's, that's, that's a good thing that they're proposing that. Um, Documentate, I've asked them for documentation of adequate capacity, capacity in the existing municipal sewer system, which would be from the sewer commissioners. Um, the the stormwater um, comments that I have, um, there's a number of them, but um, they're really not that um, they're really not that bad. They've actually done a, a nice job with the stormwater on this site. They they do meet um, the state stormwater standards. Um, I think my, my biggest concern with the stormwater is that there's a, there's a pipe behind the larger building, which is the L-shaped building on the north side of that, between that building and the retaining wall. And there's only, it's an 18 inch pipe and there's only six feet between the building and that retaining wall. So if anything happens to that pipe in the future, that you can't get in there to repair that. Um, so that, that's a concern. Uh, um, I've noted some areas from the planning board rules and regulations and as far as the stormwater design is concerned where they're gonna need some waivers. One is to use the high density py polyethylene pipe, which is the plastic pipe, which is pretty common these days. Um, another is for the use of the subsurface infiltration system. Um, I, I've asked that they also provide um, documentation that that subsurface infiltration system is, um, is designed for the loading from the fire department's heaviest apparatus. Uh, H20 loading is what these things are usually designed for. Um, that's right in the middle of a parking lot. I can I could see that a fire truck would be parked right on top of that if there were a fire in there. So I, I just want to make sure that there's no issues with that system down the road. Um, and then the, um, Mr. Novak in his presentation, he had mentioned culverts that are under the existing roadway um, that go in there. Um, the, there's a 24 inch and an 18 inch, um, particularly the 24 inch that's going to be buried under another 10 feet of material and there's going to be retaining walls going over it. Um, so I think that they should probably, um, assess the, uh, the condition of those concrete pipes, make sure they're in good condition. Um, because if they need to be replaced, now is the time to replace them before they put this roadway in there and then something happens. And it, those, those pipes are what um, make the hydraulic connection between the wetlands on either side of that existing car path that goes in there and will make, continue to make that connection 
in the future um, under that roadway. So those, those pipes are important for the wetlands out there. Um, and uh, like I said, th those are my, the, the more major concerns. A lot of the other stuff is more detailed plan editing and that type of thing. Um, but I, I really think the, the, the biggest thing that I wanted to bring to the board's attention is that amount of fill that's going to be coming into that site. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. Uh, very detailed as always. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Novak, there's a lot here. I don't know if you want to, I don't know if you want to, uh, address every single one of these things right now. I'm thinking maybe you want to, um, discuss this with your, with your team. I don't know if that. Yeah. What, what we'd like to do is we'd like to, um, just, we don't want to, since the, the letter came in late, we don't want to, um, not give it the do that the review that it's due uh, but what we'd like to be able to, to to go through and talk with the board and see if there are any modifications that they would be looking for based on the plans that they have that we can incorporate it into the next revision um, to address any of the other concerns um, we, uh, we just wanted to kind of get started on um, some of the modifications that we, we kind of figured we were going to have to do um, and we have no qualms and concerns about being able to provide the information that Mr. Brennan is uh, looking for. We would like also to be able to, to get the, the, the board everything that they need as well. Okay. Uh, well, then I'd like, to, I'd like to open it up to the board for, uh, for questions and concerns, if that works for everybody. <coughs> Mr. Baker, you want, to, uh, you want to say anything on this? Yes. <clears throat> Um, one of the big things is on Pat's general road notes, the first one about the number of truck trips. I think that should uh, also go to the police department to see if they're going to want a police detail out there while those trucks are coming in and out of Pond Street uh, because that's a heavily traveled area right there. And that's a bad corner. We're bringing in the number of trucks that are going to need to fill this in. Mm -hmm. So I think that should be addressed with the applicant with the, the police department. Well, Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman, one other thing before um, that I forgot. Um, I We do have a traffic report. I sent it to Dylan Associates, but I have not asked them to review it yet because you hadn't asked me to, but I assume you want that reviewed by Gillen Associates. At this point, yes, sir. Okay, I will, I will get him going on that right away. And the other thing was in his letter for the correspondence that we need to get, um, I'd like to see each board member get a hard copy of those instead of an email so we have it in the file and with us mr baker what do you act what letter are you talking about the fire department letter no the one from amy engineering oh okay the letters that you had questioned the highway superintendent the saw and the everything I, I believe these are about his emails yeah, I believe they are as well. Yeah. He's looking for hard copy on everything. Yes. Right. I believe those exist at at Town Hall now, Rob. Yep. That, 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 doesn't, that, that, that doesn't surprise me. Unfortunately, it's a little bit difficult to get in there. I'll coordinate somehow to some way to get those, um, and then we'll figure it out from there. But I'm assuming that after tonight's meeting – starting tomorrow or the next day, plans are going to start to get re uh, revised anyway. So mm -hmm. other than, other than uh, correspondence, uh, any plan that's at town hall is kind of going to be not worth the paper it's printed on until, uh, until I, in, um, I, I will try to yeah. work with the town hall too, to make sure that everything that you've received gets up on a web page. Yeah. 
that the public can access at yeah. any time. Yeah, because I'm fine. I'm finding that the plans that I had that that I have that I just printed out tonight are they're 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 after the revision of the of the buildings and everything because that's what was available on on the town's website. So it is what it is, and it still comes down to there there wasn't that much more. There wasn't a, a major modification when it comes to unit counts, uh, bedroom counts, uh, parking counts. So, um, Mr. Baker, if you're good, I'm going to move on. I got one other question is okay. um, when the police department, I don't know if, cause I haven't seen their information, but could they, could we ask the police department to see about setting a speed limit on that access road coming in? The police department set a speed limit on private property. Is that what you're asking? Yes. I don't know if that's doable. I don't know if they can, the the they police can department do won't have jurisdiction over the speed limit on, on site. Um, and the town has jurisdiction over the speed limit off site right. in the town of Rockland. And we typically approve changes to posted speed limits at town meeting. Right. I understand that. I think we can recommend, I think we could recommend that a speed limit of 18 miles an hour, you know, right. sign limits. Um, the police couldn't enforce it. Right. But at least it could be a recommendation to anybody entering and exiting the site based on, um, and again, these are, these are not condominiums, these are apartments. So there's going to have to be some sort of managerial body, I'm assuming on site that will kind of monitor this. Um, I think they're the ones that would have to, they would have to enforce it. It would have to be somebody on site, um, a manager or something that would end up enforcing that. But it's a good, it's, it's, it's a good insight. It's a good comment, Mr. Baker. I appreciate that. Um, you good? Yes. For now. Uh, in the line, I've got Mr. Tansy, you're next. Um, just to, uh, how come you're bringing in so much fill? I mean, why, why is it necessary to raise the, the grade of the, the parking lot 10, 13 feet above existing grade? It's all uh, dependent on groundwater separation for the drainage facility that's underneath the pavement. Um, we need to have a specific separation um, from the bottom of our infiltration system, and then you have the thickness of the infiltration system, and then you have the cover over the system. Uh, and then obviously the the system itself was in essence at the lowest point of the site, so you have to grade up from there to pr uh, promote drainage to the facility. So everything just kind of gets built off of the, the groundwater elevations that are on the site naturally occurring. So what is the groundwater elevation at this point? The average groundwater elevation under the area that the parking lot and the buildings are ranges from about 134 to 136. And what kind? Of, it's I and mean, how deep are we? Are we only dealing? Are we only dealing with feet? Because again, my, my existing conditions plan is a little bit faint. Yeah. So, and the proposed grades in those areas are one, 147, Ooh. to 148. So existing groundwater separation, we're down to a cut. We're down. You're down to a, a couple of feet. From existing grade, is is that what you're saying? The groundwater from is down two feet from roughly it's, from existing it's, grade. It's about three to four, I believe. Um, <clears throat> test pit logs. Mr. Rosa, just a comment. Uh, when the speakers are speaking, if they could just repeat their name before they start speaking so that people that aren't familiar with the voices um, know who's oh, speaking, yeah. it would just be helpful. Yep, not everybody, not everybody's on uh, on camera here. Okay. All right. Uh, Pat Brennan with Amory Engineers. Um, the groundwater ranges from four inches 
down below grade to 48. It's right in the three to four foot range for the most part is roughly where it is from existing grade. Okay. So, uh, Greg Tansy, ZBA member speaking. Um, the recharge system, is that about three and a half feet in, in height? And then you're, are you shooting for a four foot groundwater separation? Yes, the, um, the, the system itself um, uh, is going to be with the stone surrounding it is going to be, um, I believe, actually, yeah, we're at, we're at three and a half feet of height uh, of elevation over that. Or, I'm sorry, the, the system itself is roughly three and a half feet. So, but we also have cover over the system, and and part of it is because the 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 as large of the site as it is, we still need to be able to collect um, stormwater from the extents of the site. So we have obviously the minimum pitch of our um, drainage facilities. So everything starts at you know. The, the the infiltration system and then is built up from there. So, you know, if we have, a, you know, four or 500 feet of pipe run to be able to get water from the roadway or from the extents of the parking lot, um, because this area is pinned in around by wetlands, um, everything is going to be up another, you know, two feet, three feet. Uh, and then you have proper separation from the invert of the pipe to the the rim of the catch basin, which is, you know, another three and a half feet. So everything just gets built up and built up based off of that. So we have the minimum separation where we are, but as you go to the extents of the site, everything just gets picked up that much more. Uh, so John, your minimum separation, is that four feet or two feet? Uh, it, we have it as four feet. Four feet. Have you had... Uh, the what type of perk rates did you get out there on on site? Did you did you perk it or did you just go by soils or what type of loading? Yeah, we, we did not perk it. We did the Rawls rates, um, so we just did it based off of uh, the actual um, soil designations. So what was that? A one point oh two? Is it a till out there, or, is, or do you have sands and gravels? Uh, we rain there. We, I believe we have it as a 241. Okay. All right. Um, I was just wondering, have you considered decentralizing it to, you know, avoid the, um, you know, the, the loss of, uh, of, um, you know, do, do pipe runs and, um, uh, and, and that sort of thing. I mean, it just 13 feet seems like such an excessive amount of fill. I mean, these walls are going to cost you some money. Um, I mean, if it has to be that way, it has to be that way. But it, that, you know, 10 to 13 foot high walls to me sounds a little bit, um, uh, it sounds expensive. Not that that really matters to me, but it does sound excessive from a standpoint of you know, public safety and people, you know, looking at, at them through, you know, the abutters through the woods and stuff like that. We, we have looked at, we did look at a couple of different options of trying to get it um, in different locations. Just, it's just with the, uh, um, with the amount of pavement and wanting to be able to actually have an emergency overflow for the subterranean or the subsurface system, uh, it, we were going to have those long runs, uh, whether or not we're, whether we placed it where it was or in, in different locations. Um, the other thing we is, can uh, just the uh, last question was about the units itself. I mean, um, Rob, you had mentioned that these are apartments. 
Yeah, are these all rental units or are they going to be privately owned and mix or? This is uh, Rick Lincoln. So they're all uh, rental units, apartments. Does that answer the question, Mr. Tanzi? Yes, it does. All right, uh, I'm gonna move on. Who's next in line? Mr. Haynes, how you doing, sir? Doing great. Um, take myself off there. Um, I am I'm curious how, curious how this is gonna impact the neighborhood, um, what impact the raising this up um, is going to have on the floodplain and uh, the water table uh, nearby. So is that something that, um, that we've seen in any of these studies, or something that we can quantify? And to that extent, I'm curious if uh, it might be possible to get a section through the site showing the uh, the abutting neighbors because it's so tall that I'm just curious what some of these neighbors are actually going to be looking at in terms of those retaining walls. Uh, some of the lots are very close by. So, um, and then the only other thing I would say, this maybe goes to Judy, that um, there, it seems to me that there are a lot of boards that are that should be weighing in. And as I understood the comprehensive permit, they're supposed to respond to us. Mm -hmm. So we're able to, uh, to talk to the applicants. Everything should be coming to you. Right. All this commu this communication should be coming through you so that you have a record because if somebody appeals your decision, it's your record that is on, is on the line. So, you know, I am concerned about, what seems to me to be kind of missing stuff here. And, you know, I can talk about this with you a little bit more offline or, or when we, you know, meet on the 30th, but if it will be helpful to the board for me to try to coordinate some of this communication with other town boards and departments, I would be happy to do that. That would help. Um, the way I understood the, there's a conservation application, but that's a, the notice of intent for the state. Yes. Is, does, con does our conservation board, are they going to participate with us or are they going to act independently? Because to me, that is the other, the big impact of this project. So I don't, I'm not clear when a notice of intent is filed. Has, it, has a notice of intent already been filed with CONCOM? Yes, the notice of intent has been filed. We, uh, I believe they set a date of July 14th for the first public hearing. So, you know, one question I would have is, for a project of this complexity, does the Conservation Commission also get peer review assistance? Because if they do, um, and maybe Amory Engineers is servicing all the departments, I don't know, Pat, so pardon my question, but it would just seem to me that it would be helpful to all the boards to be hearing from the same consulting firm so that you're all getting consistent information. Um, I don't know if CONCOM takes advantage of peer review, but... For a project like this, they may want to, in which case I would just suggest that there be some communication with them about uh, about the so the consultant selection process. Unless, Pat, you're already on board. I don't know. Mr. Rosa, for you to the applicant, the Conservation Commission typically uh, uses Marty Nova, um, uh, and I think she's with Tetra Tech now. Yeah. Beta. Um, Oh, beta. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Pat, are you are, are you are you um, have you been asked by the commission to do any peer review on this project from a wetlands perspective? Um, they they have not reached out to me on this one. They did Marty Nova did reach out to me on the elementary school that which we were just reviewing. So um, they they relied on my stormwater review on that project. Um, Henry Nova used to do the stormwater review for conservation, but he's not with Beta Group as Marty is. Um, so I'm not sure. Conservation may rely on my review. I'm not sure. They have not reached out to me directly. Is that some communication so we, that I could facilitate for the board? Do you want me to uh, it would be nice. The, the, the wetland line, the, the wetlands are, are a main, ma they're a major thing on this site. 
And I, I, I certainly agree. And all I'm suggesting is if it would be helpful to you to have some help coordinating this communication, I'd be happy to do that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I also, I do know that there's a new wetland, wetland bylaw in town. Um, and I don't know if, I don't know if this, the, because this was submitted a while back in 2019, I don't know if they're subject to the new wetland bylaw, but there, again, there is a new wetland bylaw in town that, um, uh, Conoco may not be, may not have been aware of, um, and um, you know when it was in a, when it went into effect, and I, deter, I on this I deferred it with Attorney Galvin, but I mean, yeah, uh, I, I wrote I wrote the new bylaw, so um, and I know when it was approved at town meeting, it was approved at the 2019 annual town meeting, so it would have been in effect for this project, okay. and to the extent that the local bylaw has um, provisions that are more stringent than the act, the applicant will either have to comply or request waivers. Mm -hmm. And this board is right. the one that will determine the extent to which the local bylaw is applied. The Conservation Commission will retain jurisdiction over this project to make sure that the project complies um, with the state regulations, which are independent of the local regulations. And the project will have to comply with all state regulations, except those that might be waived by the commission. And that's an independent process. So, so I think it might be helpful to the ZBA to have input from the Conservation Commission about any waivers of the local bylaw that the applicant may request. But clearly, if that's not in the existing waiver list, that needs to be added. Yeah, I agree. Same. Mr. Chairman, can I ask another question? I mean, please do. And, to the um, to, to Mr. Haynes' uh, comments about what what's the neighborhood going to see, I do a lot of this work, and I'll tell you this is the first time um, when I've seen a multifamily project of this magnitude that there hasn't been an architect peer review um, to assist the board, and I would strongly recommend that you do that, um, that you uh, obtain uh, design review assistance from an architect to look at these plans. Um, it's a big project, <laughs> and uh, you know it's it's both the uh, the issues are both the sort of visual impact on the neighborhood, but also the living space for the people who will eventually reside there. Mm -hmm. So the concerns kind of go two ways, and I would just say, I really it would design is certainly one of the local concerns that's recognized in the act, and I think the board would be well advised to request um, peer review on the design. Um, I can help you with that procurement if you want or not. It's totally up to you, but that really needs to happen. Peer review would have to be uh, peer review would have to be approved by the applicant, and they, they would right. also have to be funded by the applicant. That's absolutely right, like any other peer review. But I mean, it's a it's it's it, design is is specifically recognized as a local concern mm -hmm. <laughs> in the statute. So. Uh, you're, you're well within your rights to say that you need that. And frankly, my experience in probably 50 of these at this point is that DBAs uh, request it and they get it. Uh, uh, given the extent of retaining walls, it's, it's imperative. That's what I was thinking too. I agree. I agree. So if you want some assistance with that, mm. I can help you. Um, you know, again, I'm trying not to overstep my bounds here, but I think that input would be very helpful to the board and may very well be helpful to the applicant as well. No, I that's a hundred percent agreed. Uh, Mr. Haynes, do you have any more, anything else you want to add? Um, I'll just simply say <clears throat> in my comments from other boards comment, um, I'd like to have some identification about which boards should be reporting to us beyond conservation. My, which is my the biggest one. Mm -hmm. The other one that was singled out as being separate from us uh, was the Board of Health. And, and so I was wondering if that was, uh, if there was an aspect of this that uh, we needed to understand about Board of Health's review of the process as an independent review. Mr. Rosa, this this project's going to be connected to the municipal sewerage system. Yeah. That's typically the Board of Health's major concern. Not their only concern, but uh, their major concern. And the Board of Health should be commenting, particularly on uh, 
they, they should comment on the project in general, but mm -hmm. they may have concerns about trash removal and trash storage. And um, they might have some concerns regarding the piping and things like that. You have, I'm just looking at your board and commission list while I'm participating here. You have a design review board. I don't know how active they are, but I would think they would be asked to weigh in and probably even communicate with the peer review architect. The planning board typically reviews these projects and provides comments to a ZBA. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I think those at least you would want to, to hear from. Planning boards do plan review all the time, so they may have some particular input that would be helpful to your board. Mm -hmm. The planning board in the town of Rockland is the design review board. Okay, that's helpful to know. Thank you. <clears throat> That's those were those are my questions and concerns. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. Who's next in line? Who's next in line? You're out, Mr. Ha. Mr. Saucy isn't okay. So I guess that's me. Uh, Mr. Novak, is there any chance you can put up the uh, the uh, design plan again, highlighting and showing uh, uh, Wilson? Will uh, I guess it's Wilson and Cedar. I did it again. No, I think we're there. Um, can you, any chance you can zoom into uh, that mid, that hard 90 degree angle? Yeah, right in the way. Okay, there we go. Now that's, that's being proposed as emergency access only. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Yes. Um, now that the building that's right there, that's a proposed building. What is that going to be again? That's a, a clubhouse, kind of a, uh, Mr. Lincoln might be able to describe it, but a kind of a function uh, facility for um, the actual, um, the apartment complex. Okay. Now, what elevation is that going to be at? And because, again, I see, in, I, I see existing elevations in there at like 139. Um, I, I see yeah. here your catch basin that's virtually directly across from it is elevation 146. So it's, it's, yeah, so you, your, your finish floor is probably going to be around 148. So it would, it's in essence a walkout would, uh, in kind of setup. So you have uh, roughly eight feet of drop from the front to the back. So you'd have almost a, almost a, a full walkout uh, into the basement. So if we didn't have to um, kind of blend in the the access for the fire, it, we could modify the graining, but we wanted to keep a smooth transition from uh, the Wilson Street area up onto the site. Okay. Uh, any chance you can zoom out a bit, sir? All right. Now, there... In past renditions, I thought I saw I thought I saw a residential house off of Wilson Street. Um, yeah, right in there. I, I, in past renditions of this, there what is is that is am I correct? Is there a house there right now? There is currently a house there now. Um, as uh, of right now, there's no uh, intent of the the that parcel is part of the property, but there's no intent of using that. Um, Currently, there's no intent of using anything on that parcel. Okay. Uh, now, anybody that's uh, and again, I, I don't know this, but there are there are a number of other properties along on Wilson Street. Is that correct? Yes. How many of them have rights to this private road? I I don't believe that that Wilson is a private road. I believe that Wilson is a public way. Wilson and Wilson yeah. is the public. Okay. Yeah. Um, currently, there is a. Um, I guess. Because uh, I see this Cedar. I see the Cedar Street there, and that's calling it out as a private way now. And I know it's unconstructed, but. Yeah. So currently, so this is the current setup. So currently, there is um, a, a an existing gate from the town that is set up here. We're just hoping to, to be able to push it to the edge of that um, to down so that okay. from this up, 
um, that you don't have people parking there and, and things like that. So I, I don't think the town, the neighbors would want to have cars parked at the end of the dead end street. Either. No, that's, so. a, that's agreed. I'd, I'd like to see the, I'd like to see the limit of roadway acceptance on this plan. Um, you know, if it, if it is an accepted roadway, cause again, the Cedar streets called out as private 10 foot wide, which I don't believe is a correct number. Um, No, maybe, it maybe it is ten feet wide. I don't. I. I. I don't know, but I, I. I tend to doubt it. Okay. So that's no. That's number one, and then um, number two. If Wilson Street, okay, I've got it as I've got it as public. I'd like to see where the limit of uh, limit of acceptance is, and then. Uh, Going back to uh, a number one, another one of uh, Pat's comments. Um, that building is really close to the road. Uh, that's well inside the zoning setback for a, for a roadway. I'd like to know. I'd, I'd like to know kind of what's going on there because that's that's way closer to a that's way closer to the road than we've ever allowed. A building. I know it's not a. I, I know it's not a built road, but that's why I kind of want to see where the limit of public a, uh, public acceptance is. Okay. Yeah. Do you read? This is Rick Lincoln. The original. Uh, we didn't even present it to the board, but some of the um, original thoughts were to put the clubhouse on that parcel in Wilson Street. Mm -hmm. But then we thought better of that idea trying to keep stuff away from neighbors on Wilson Street and everything else so that that's kind of some of the context with that so what happens with that proper with that end piece on Wilson Street what ends up happening to that right now the plan is to raise it and and uh, leave it as green grass that may change but um, you know like just open area just the so general open space. Correct. We're trying to the you know some of the other context too is some of the early thoughts were to do the open space you know as you walk down to the to the south there at least the way this drawing looks you know there's a bunch of open upland down there, mm -hmm. um, but we decided to just stay away from that that whole area. There's a vernal pool down there. You know there are wetlands. There is a lot of upland down there, but mm -hmm. Um, you know, we just decided to kind of keep it compact and way up here and out of sight. So what is, um, uh, Mr. Novak, if you can zoom in, uh, there looks like a set of stairs that are going down into that general area. Yeah. So you have a set of, you have a set of stairs going down there. So you, it, it looks like you're proposing to allow people to go into that area to begin with. Yeah. So, well, the, the limits of the property if you look at it, um, mm -hmm. it's a fairly extensive property. So what we wanted before this was really even involved, uh, there's a, you can see there's an existing pathway back mm -hmm. into this area as well. This is the site where the development is. What we were um, hoping to be able to do is to give them some, you know, a area to stretch their legs where they could walk down the steps and then access the path and then come back into another wooded area so that everybody doesn't have to be crammed into the apartment. So, All right, so Janet, be, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. In, in essence, it's just trying to create more of an open space for people to be able to to mosey through the woods, and and, and you know, you are you know in an area that um, it has it. So why not take advantage of it? No, I absolutely understood. Uh, just out of curiosity, what's to stop? Uh, uh, just about anybody from walking down Wilson Street, cutting th cutting down the private way of Cedar, and going out there themselves. And this is not—you're not proposing like a public area. You're proposing a private area for the residents of the of Shingle Mill, correct? Yeah, I mean, it, in essence, it's private property to begin with. So exactly. I mean, anybody could, it would be anybody would trust be trespassing on the the property um, if they weren't doing it without the owner's permission. So. Okay. Um, how are they going to see it? How are they going to know that that's happening? It just see it's it seems like it's so far and away. And I appreciate the open space. I think I think all projects like this, if you can do it, should take advantage of that open space. 
Um, but it just, it's almost a, a I don't know. It's all, it's almost an attractive nuisance um, that if all of a sudden people find out that it's over there and you're, and you're allowing people to, it, it just, people are going to be coming down that Wilson road uh, specifically to look for, the, for the, to look for this. And if there's a n nice flat piece of area that, that used to have a house on it, people are going to park there uh, and they're going to take walks, you know, private walks. So I'm just, I'm a little concerned about that. Um, mo I'm a little concerned about the, the, the physical access to that site from that area, most specifically the construction access. Uh, I just want to make sure that nobody's proposing any kind of construction access off of Wilson. No, there, 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 there's no intent to come down Wilson. Um, okay. you, so for construction. All right. Um, it's just the, again, that's, we're dealing with a residential area, obviously. Um, you know, a, we're dealing with a, with a, with an H one zone that's abutting a, a, a residential. So we have, we do have things that we have to think about. Yeah. And I know you understand that. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, sir. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, yeah, I'd like to see, I, I personally will, I would like to see a little bit more detail uh, as to what's going to be happening over in here, you know, in, in the, in this intersection between Wilson and Cedar. Um, I think I'd like to see if there is going to be any kind of proposed activities um, in the, you know, in this, in this open area that you're concerned that, that you want to consider uh, open space. Um, if you want it, cause I didn't, and I see that 60 foot dimension. There's a sewer easement over there, isn't there? I had thought that there was a sewer easement on this property someplace. May, and, and again, maybe I'm wrong, but we will confirm with our survey. Okay. Yeah. I had thought for some reason I had thought that there was a sewer, the, and I can look on the assessor's maps, but I was pretty sure that there was a sewer easement through here. Um, but either and either way, uh, I think I've raised enough. I've raised enough of my concerns. Um, Mr. Galvin, you got anything to say? Sure. I mean, my experience has been we have a project that's sitting on some ten feet of fill, and you've got five-story buildings that there's a uh, rendering of the proposed buildings, and there's typically a site profile um, so that. And, and sometimes I've even seen a balloon test floated so that people that live in the abutting residential neighborhood know what they're likely to see mm -hmm. through from their abutting properties. And, you know, I know that there's a fairly extensive uh, vegetated buffer here, and it may be that you see nothing, but uh, one way of demonstrating that would be to potentially float a balloon to the um, proposed final height uh, and take some photographs and submit that to the board. I think that might be very helpful. We've done um, that for towers. Yes. Yeah. But you know, five, no, five story building is, you know, going to be approximately 50 feet in height plus, mm -hmm. uh, 10 feet, uh, or more in fill to be added to the site. So, you know, functionally what will be there in the future is an estimated 60 feet high, and, uh, you know, on top of a building, even though it's not a story, there's typically mechanical equipment. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes if that's placed in the middle of the building, it's invisible or it's screened by the roofing material. But um, and I'm sure that it would be in this particular case. But you can't tell that without looking at the renderings of the buildings. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also nice to know when you can you know, what are the breakdown of the units going to look like, even a conceptual floor plan of the units so that you know what the amenities of the units are. It, and that might change by the time they actually build the thing. But, you know, conceptually, you know, you want to look what the layout looks like. And I think that might be helpful. Um, I did have a question on access through the residential subdivision to Wilson, but if it's a public way and they're connecting to the public way, I have a less of a concern about that. Um, I was making a list of things that I thought I heard 
we were looking for, and I can probably just tell you what that is, and the applicant could write that down. And um, so it looked it looked to it looked to me like we were looking for an updated list of waivers, um, including on that updated list of waivers what relief is specifically being requested in each category, whether it's the general bylaws, the zoning bylaws, the subdivision rules and regulations, the conservation bylaw and regulations. Um, those are our general, you know, local rules. We do have some local board of health rules. We have, um, we have an earth removal bylaw, but this sounds like it's a fill. So, um, I just thought the updated list of waivers, specifically what relief w would be helpful. Um, I think we, I think Ms. Barrett already addressed uh, adequately the issue with conservation. It does appear we have a local bylaw, and your board is the one that's going to be deciding the extent to which that's going to apply to this project. So, um, d reaching out to Mr. Doug Galemi, the chair of that board, is going to be critical, and I'll provide Judy with the contact. Thank you. There. Um, uh, the fire department letter, to the extent that the board could get that, we don't have it. We can certainly ask Chief Duffy to provide that. Um, but if the applicant has it and can provide it to us, that would maybe even be quicker. Um, I, I heard Mr. Brennan talk about a fill quantity analysis. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think understanding how many uh, truckloads of fill and what quantity of fill is going to be brought in here is critical because there will be a period of time where there'll be uh, truck intensive activity and it's been the practice of your board and the planning board on major projects to limit the quantity of truck traffic uh, including the timing of that delivery material or even the removal of material um, to hours that are other than school hours um, to minimize the problem although this project is not you know, close by any schools. Um, I didn't see any detailed landscape plans, and I get it that it probably is conceptual at this stage, <coughs> but our board is typically asked for um, uh, a concept landscape plan and mm -hmm. conditioned final approval on a landscape architect submitting a final plan before the commencement of work that's consistent with the conceptual plan. Um, I heard the requirement for a, um, I, I heard Mr. Brennan mentioned a lighting plan, which I would envision would be a photometric plan that would prove that lighting associated with the proposed fixtures would not migrate off site or be visible to abutting properties. And in this particular case, um, I don't know if there's any outdoor decks planned, but um, a building that might otherwise be invisible might become quite visible when someone has an outdoor deck that's abutting that residential area with outdoor lighting. And you're going to want to make sure that that outdoor lighting that's on the building or on a deck or something like that is properly shielded with baffles so that it's not visible um, to the abutting property owners. Um, those are the ones that I, I, I noted right now. And I, I, one other question. Um, Mr. Novak talked about ACEC. I'm going to take a wild guess that maybe the board doesn't know what that is, but it's area critical environmental concern. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, I think it would be helpful if the applicant just explained the, how, this, how an area of critical environmental concern impacts this project um, uh, yeah, and, I act, um, what I'm, I actually missed on that. that it's not an ACEC. We're an outstanding wa uh, resource water. Um, oh, so there is a little bit of difference between that. That I apologize. Okay. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else. Um, I, I didn't know, if, is there a pool associated with the clubhouse or is it just more of a, uh, building where people can get their mail and gather outside the residential buildings. That was the only other question I had. Yeah, no, no pool. This is Rick. Okay. okay. Great. Yeah, those were, those were my things that I think we needed to see. 
And um, certainly I think the process can be fluid where the applicant can address the issues. But, you know, one of the parts of an early proceeding is really just to identify the major issues that we do have. And I think you won't be able to finalize all those issues without seeing this additional information. Agreed. Uh, let's see where we are and where are we? Um, Mr. Novak, can I get my, can we get our screen back? Sure. <clears throat> okay. Um, Mr. Rubel. Yeah. How you doing, sir? Not too bad. What, um, you've been into, you've, you've been in attendance. How, uh, how, how do you think it's going so far? Well, right now, right now I have my, my phone on, on, on this project. I got my iPad working and I got my desktop working. Oh, geez. And I'm using my iPad right now. What do you, uh, do you have any comments at this point? Have you, do you, have you well, looked in? I don't, I, just, um, I don't see a full package here yet. Yeah, I agree. I get, I get the full package. I agree with Pat on, with all that fill that's coming in on those guardrails. Um, obviously, I believe we're going to be over the 30 inches. Um, when a guardrail is put up, I would like to see it not being the ladder effect. Instead of being the old cow stable where kids can use it as a ladder and up and over they go. Um, and the other question I have would be for um, Mr. Galvin. Bob, on that Cedar Street where that was a paper street, is there any concern on the town on that where it was a paper street? Um, no. Well, I mean, obviously it was a part of a, some type of a subdivision at one point, but it's never been physically constructed. Um, if they were going to make improvements to Cedar Street, and I haven't heard that they are, then we would have a concern. But uh, other than that, I don't see any concern. Okay. That's all I have, Rob. Just okay. a God real. And right now, it's you know, for me, it's kind of early for me to have anything to say until the building starts. All right, no, that's on. That's understood. I appreciate you weighing in, um, Mr. Rosa. Can I just mention one other thing? Please do. It's, uh, yeah. So, um, Mr. Brennan talked about uh, a wall detail, and it's really important that we do get a detail for the retaining walls, particularly those that abut the <clears throat> conservation land, because when a when a wall of this extent is placed, it's placed on a footing. Mm -hmm. and the footing typically extends out a couple of feet, uh, and I'm not a, an engineer, but it's just my experience that there's a footing that's much wider than the wall to prevent the wall from sinking. And in order to actually construct it, sometimes you have to go even further than the footing to get the footing in and then build the wall. Uh, so the area of disturbance is going to have to be identified uh, with a wall detail in the areas that they're really abutting uh, conservation land. Yeah, it depends on which kind of wall that they're going to, that they're going to go with, right. whether whether it's a concrete wall or if, uh, if it's one of these versa block walls or or, or something like that. Um, but yeah, you it's never just the end of the wall. It's never just the face of the wall. It's always a couple feet beyond it. Um, most specifically for disturbance. So I agree with that. Um, Let's see. Anybody, uh, anybody else got anything they want to say before I open it up to the public? I had a couple of other, Rob, that came up. Go for it, sir. Um, Bob Baker, CBA. <clears throat> when they're doing the construction of this, the, the road and stuff, are they also going to be putting in the piping and the all the catch basins and stuff as they fill it in, or are they going to fill it in, get it compacted and then start? That's not something that we really need to talk about right now. That's, that's unless my you have a major concern, what's your major concern with that, with, with that process? My major concern is all the heavy trucks coming in and out of there over mm -hmm. those pipes. So, I guess the answer would probably be no, only because you can't drive over them. If they fill, if they're putting it in and filling after the pipes, you know, are they going to fill the whole project in, get the retainer? Then dig it all back up? 
and then dig it and put the pipes in. Uh, is there a construction manager that would like to answer that question? Well, this is Rick. Um, is he talking about the drainage pipes way up front by Pond Street, those existing culverts? What he's talking about is, are you, are you going to fill the site in first and then go excavate for your catch basins and your, and your, uh, and your manholes and your pipes? Oh, I see. Or are you going to place them first? Because I, again, the, the, you know this, the general depth of a, uh, of a catch basin with a deep sump is about 10 feet. So, nice. you know, it's a, you, you've got that, you're dealing with your cat, you're dealing with manholes that are probably going to be overall eight feet deep. Um, I guess the, I, I'm, I'm assuming the the concern is, are you going to go out there, place all your utility structures and then bury them? Or are you going to fill the site up to where, it, are you going to fill it up to at least, uh, um, you know, rough grade, you know, your subgrade, and then re-excavate for each one. I think it's a little bit too soon to ask on that. Um, and some depends on the site contractor you're using too. So. Yeah, saying so it's, I, I appreciate the idea, Mr. Baker, I appreciate the concern, but right now I think it's a little bit early to ask that. Um, and then, again, once the, if this goes through, if this goes through all the approvals and everything's, everything's good, um, there's going to be a meeting, there's going to be a meeting with the zoning board prior to construction, pre-construction meeting. So we can start talking about it at that point. All right. Does that add, does that answer your question? No, that's all. All right, sir. I appreciate that. Um, before I open it up to the general public, uh, I do have some correspondence here, some abutting correspondence that I do want to get into the record. Um, all right, Kim, hopefully you get your ears on. Uh, to Rockland Zoning Board of Appeals from John J. and Jean L. Wojner, 139 Turner Road, Rockland, Mass., 02370. Subject, public hearing regarding application by Sh uh, Shingle Mill LLC to construct on property located at Zero Pond Street and 152 Wilson Street, uh, Rockland, Massachusetts. Uh, as an abutter, I am writing in regard to the above-referenced application from Shingle Mill to build upon land abutting our property and, associate, and associated neighborhood in an effort to ensure a, mutual, a mutually satisfactory positive model for cohabitation. I respectfully submit the following to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Overall consideration must be given to ensuring minimal impact to the longtime Rockland neighborhood slash residents upon which this development abuts. Current access to the property is limited. What are the, I guess, question here is what are the access plans via access via Wilson or, or the paper or the paper road off of Turner road would be a concern as that would transverse current smaller neighborhood a lot of big words here that aren't making a lot of sense. Neighborhood roads in an R1 district with the associated traffic volume increase, with the associated traffic volume increase, what are the plans to mitigate the current and known congested and dangerous pond and Hingham Street feeder streets? Yeesh. I wish he was here to explain this. In this plan, the full scope of the development of the entire property or is a subsequent phase possible or even now under consideration for the rest of the property? Can we limit the development of the entire parcel to land to this specific plan footprint under consideration so as to not overstress the area? Uh, Mr. Rosa, uh, I, John Washner is here in case you need me to help you out. <laughs> yeah, so you're, 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 I, I hear what you're trying to say, and yeah. you're, you're putting a lot of you're, you're putting a lot of words together here, and yeah. I, and every so single one of them. But you know, I, I think we talked about the access plans, and it's not through Wilson or uh, Cedar. So as long as that's yeah. continued to be okay. All right. Um, I, I don't want to jump, you know, if you need to read this in the verbatim, but yeah, uh, unfortunately I have to read it okay. verbatim. So okay. we're so, having, I'm having issues here. All right. So if you need clarification, just holler. No, very simple. Very simply, sir. Uh, you're here. You can speak for yourself. I don't need to read your letter. Okay. Um, yeah. That, that's great. Yeah. Talk to me. What, okay. uh, um, what are your concerns, sir? 
so the other concerns were uh, limit the lighting, et cetera, and you folks did cover that. As you said earlier, it's a very fluid situation, so at the time I didn't know what, was, what people had covered. One thing we didn't cover would be nose, noise abatement to reduce any intrusive noise, such as air conditioning, trash receptacles, that type of thing. Uh, and then <clears throat> the one that you just kind of left off on, is this the full scope of the development or are there subsequent phases that would be added. And the reason I ask is this is a very congested uh, area as far as road access and it might overstress the area. So the question is, is this the full scope of the development or if it could be anything else down the road? Mr. Novak or Mr. Lincoln, would you like to respond to that? This is Rick Lincoln. Uh, yeah, there are no plans for any additional phases. Um, and I would highly doubt anything like that could occur, you know, as, as mentioned, you, you, you only have uh, your access out to an egress out to Pond Street. And um, I, I don't see another building going there and I, I doubt the town would allow it. Okay. So basically, as long as you consider some of the things that I have in the letter, which are noise and lighting and work with the, uh, the, uh, the applicant in, in the neighborhoods, uh, I mean, that's all I'm asking. To be and, fair. and I appreciate that, sir. Those are yep. all concerns that we have to that we do have to address um, right from the right from the beginning. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for stepping in, sir. I, I, glad, I, I definitely glad appreciate that. Glad to help. All right, I've got two letters. I've got two letters that are from the same woman, a Virginia A. Hoffman. Um, so fancy. Virginia, are you here? I'll say that, I'll, I'll assume that's a no. The first one that I have is March 27th of 2020. Uh, it's from a Virginia A. Hoffman, address is 66 Colby Street, Rockland, Massachusetts, 02370. Um, dear Mr. Rosa, I received a notice, I received a notice of the, vet, of the hearing for Zero Pond Street for April 7th. And I definitely want to attend, but I do not have access to the computer, tablet, or smartphone. The computer I use is at the library, and the library is closed. So I will not be able to attend remotely. I am also not able to get my information on the applicant's plans. Uh, excuse me, it's a handwritten letter here. Since this is a public meeting, I respectfully request it be postponed until town hall is reopened and all parties that are affected uh, are eligible of attending. Thank you very much. Sincerely, Virginia A. Hoffman. I've since got a second letter uh, dated June 6th, 2020. Uh, Rockland Zoning Board of Appeals. Dear Mr. Ra Dear Mr. Rosa and Zoning Board of Appeals members, since I do not have internet access during this pandemic, I am unable to attend the virtual public hearing of the June 10th, 2020, 2020 regarding Shingle Mills 40B application. I am... Uh, Regarding, uh, I am writing to express a concern about the inclusion of the 152 Wilson Street in the application. This previous, the previous property owner bought this property along with other surrounding properties to town meeting, brought this property along with other town, uh, along with other surrounding properties to town meeting on May 2nd, 2011, Article 47 in order to change the residential zoning status to allow a business. Town meeting soundly defeated this request. I am very concerned that 152 Wilson is now proposed to be part of the business, part of the business of running and housing project effectively overturning to town meeting vote to keep this property residential R1. Uh, I apologize. I read that verbatim. Uh, or I read that word for word, rather. Um, so, Mr. Novak, Mr. Lincoln, is there anything that any anything you wanna anything you think you need to uh, talk about here? Uh, this is Rick Lincoln. I, I mean, I think we covered that earlier in the discussion. I mean, yeah. uh, the intent is to kind of leave it green grass so yep. I, I don't see and it's certainly nothing that's commercial um 
Okay. I think that I think that addresses that. Um, there was I don't remember this ever coming to town meeting. I maybe I wasn't maybe I wasn't there at that point, but I remember it's she's saying that it came to town meeting to change it to residential zoning. Did you have anything to do with that? No, that was probably the guy I bought it from. I mean, I reading between the lines there, it sounds like he may have proposed something commercial to change the zoning from R1. Okay. I mean, that's the way I, I heard that. I um, remember in past in, in past discussions or past talk about this, there was supposed to be a uh, supermarket that was supposed to be there at some point uh, or something like that. Yeah, that was way before my time. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'm sir. Not, Ernesto Carora, uh, I represent uh, Shingo Mail LLC, and uh, I'm also the previous owner of the property. I mm -hmm. sold the property to Mr. Lincoln. So I never had ownership of uh, 152 Wilson Street. I uh, had uh, an option one time, and we did propose to change the zoning from for uh, 152 Wilson Street from uh, R1 to back then was I2, Industrial 2. Uh, that was prior to the H1 uh, zoning uh, taking place. And it was for the purpose of uh, uh, building a supermarket. Okay, so but that the, that change now I, I'm pretty sure that change never happened. It's still a residential piece of change. Yeah, it's still, it's still residential, and uh, Mr. You know, uh, Mr. Lincoln is not proposed to change the zone in the whole state as uh, R1. Okay, so that takes care of that one. Uh, let's see, and then this one I just got today. Um, dated June 10th, 2020, uh, from Elisa Fitzgerald. Um, 10 Wright Street, Rockland, Mass. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to express my concerns regarding the Shingle Mill LLC, uh, care of Conoco, comprehensive permit, 40B application for Zero Pond Street, Map 9, Lot 13, and 152 Wilson Street, Map 10, Lot 68. My husband and I are the owners of our residence at 10 Wright Street. After reviewing the application and plans for this project, I am deeply, deeply concerned about the opening of Zero Pond Street as the main means of entry for this project. Additionally, as a direct abutter, this project will directly impact our residents and qualify and quality of life. We have lived at our residence for the past 19 years. The site map plans indicate that the road that will be built is right on top of my property, leaving us wide open to the new street that will be created and destroying the proper and destroying the quality of life we have enjoyed as according to the site map both wrong sentence here as according to the site map both 10 and 13 Wright Street will be encroached upon at the corner of both properties by a catch basin that will be placed directly at the end of Wright Street. What will this do to the water table and flooding within our neighborhood? Also, traffic on Pond Street is extremely busy and congested due to the Asinippi Office Park, Home Depot traffic, and traffic e exiting the highway. Cars that travel to and from these three locations nice. make exiting our small neighborhood very difficult already. By adding additional traffic for the 200 plus units, movement in our small neighborhood will be impossible. <laughs> This poses a serious safety issue as, as well as increased sound issues. We have lived in a very, very secluded, quiet place for years and now will be exposed to noise, traffic, exhaust. Uh, I assume street or complex, I assume street or complex lighting will also be added for visibility, leaving us wide open and exposed to the new entrance way. The size of this project is an already overwhelmed the size of this project in an in an already overwhelmed traffic pattern area with approximately 500 cars coming and going will overwhelm our street neighborhood community and quality of life what is the what is planned for the quality of life for the houses on Wright Street push this through during a pandemic when the zoning board can't even hold an open meeting outside of zoom call in outside do that again. Outside of a Zoom call is sneaky. What about our elderly neighbors, neighbors who aren't or who aren't tech savvy? This leaves them without a voice to rebut what is now being pushed through. Thank you for listening to my concerns. Please let us know what will be done for the residents on for the residents on Wright Street. Thank you, Lisa and George Fitzgerald, 10 Wright Street, 
Rockland, Mass, 02370. I would like to know what will be done regarding the privacy of, of for us and our neighbors. What will be done regarding the CO? Um, I, there may be a second page to this. I don't think so. Um, There's not. Okay. There's not. This sounds like Mrs. Fitz, uh, Ms. Fitzgerald. Is that correct? Correct. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for sending those. Uh, thank you for sending the letter. Did I, I? I probably butchered it, and I do apologize. But uh, you did a great job. Is there anything that you'd like to add? I'm very concerned about opening Pond Street. I'm very, very concerned about the number of trucks you want to run right by my backyard if you look at the plans and i might have got it wrong it might not be a catch basin it might be a flower basin i think you explained tonight but if you look at the at the plans on the corner of 10 right street and 13 right street that's right at the corner of our property miss fitzgerald can i interrupt for a second sure mr novak is there any play is there any way you can share your screen and show uh and show everybody what uh, miss fitzgerald is talking about the area Right at Pond Street. <clears throat> so my property's on the left, my neighbor's property's on the right. Do you see the swirls that are coming right to the corner of my property? And then I want to know what's the distance between my property line and this road that's going in and now a 13 foot wall. Elevation. It's insane what you're trying to put on top of us. So, okay. So, I, I, again, I'm looking, at, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Wright Street. Typically with these plans, the butters are, are labeled on those plans. Um, you just had, that's me. Okay, that's you right there? That's 10. The one, over, the one across the street, that's 13. Okay. And do you uh, see this? The, what is this? A catch basin or... Uh, that's gonna they call it a rain garden uh, rain garden but it's gonna end a, it's it's basically it's a detention basin that's gonna that's gonna collect water and then slowly dissipate it into uh, okay the is wetland. it subsurface or is that just gravel to collect rainwater it, it, yeah it's it's a it's a it'll be a planted basin with um a different plants in it so it's not just going to be a, a grass detention basin there it will. It is, um, in, in essence, a, a bio retention area. So um, I don't know if I have a good detail. Um, as we we will be providing some additional detail for in the landscaping that will show um, uh, what exactly the plantings are. This is actually. Uh, that's, yeah, I don't. I don't think I have a good cross section of it, but it will be. In essence, this is what yeah, I don't have a good cross section of it, um, but what we we will provide us some additional details so you guys can see exactly what's going to happen there. Um, the but what is, of the road? this this right here will end up um, just capturing water from the high point of the road. And from you know the edge of the street to capture in here, and then it will what it will capture mm -hmm. and feed the, the plants here, then go into the control structure and then flow this way. Anything that is emergency <laughs> overflow this way, back into this swale and go back underneath. Uh, you can see it's on a 13 foot wall. Um, but there are some higher walls down as you get back to the high point over here. But in this area, you're going from a you know a, a wall at the ground level to about six feet. Um, in in this area, six to eight feet along um, along this section of, of roadway. So For the next eight? meeting, sir. What I'd like to see is I'd like to see a, a wall profile and then preferably a cross section coming from Miss Fitz, uh, Miss Fitzgerald's property through, so we can get an idea of how high this is actually going to be. And how close, because if you right. look at the, the corner right of my, the end of my property, how many feet is that before your wall starts? Uh, this corner? Yep. Um, I don't have a scale in, uh, on me, so I have to apologize. The wall thickness itself is shown as two feet, so you're probably 
We'll get we'll get you an exact number, but um, that's the thickness of the wall. It's not two feet from your property. It's um, I would okay. say between five feet, approximately five and six feet off of the corner. But we'll get exact distances. Um, if I turn on my cat to to get the exact number, it'll uh, crash on me. So. Okay, when I moved to Rockland, I moved to this area because this was a very secluded area. I knew I had the Home Depot, and I deal with that all the time with the trucks. I deal with the Pond Street traffic, which is suicidal at times, and kids have been hit. But my question now is, I grew up in the city, and you want to put this massive wall right outside my door? Would any of you want to live across from that? And with all the foliage gone, we'll just be looking at the Home Depot. I already get flooding from the wetlands that go behind me. I already have a sub pump. Now you want to push it in the front of the house and try to tell me it's going to overflow out. I've been here forever. I understand these pipes you're talking about clog all the time. Miss Fitzgerald, can I ask you a question? Sure. How do you access your house down at down Wright Street? Because I, again, it's kind of I, I don't know how I don't know how Wright Street comes into play here. I I know where Pond Street is, but I don't know how I I don't know where Wright. How do you access? We go, right? we go down Curry. You take okay. a right, and then there's Wright Street. And if you look outside the end of Wright Street, you can see this guardrail. Okay. It's very very close. Has anybody come down and even looked at that, this plan in real time? And now you want to add how many trucks a day coming down? No, no, that's going to be during construction, but... No, but the 400 to 500 cars, they're going to live in there. Oh, agreed. No, no, I... I, and, I, and I I'm I, assuming we're going to have street lights. so now that my quiet, dark night's backyard is going to become, what, a baseball field? Hopefully, it, I, I know that's not that's not the intention. And what we need to do is we need to kind of remain calm at this point. Um, we know I, we all know that it's a very very stressful situation. Uh, it's not something that I don't think any of us really wanted to deal with or wanted to wanted to see happen here. But uh, this is private property that we're dealing with. But that's why the zoning board is here to try and mitigate this to make sure that what happens out here does not impact your property in a negative in a, in a, in a negative way. Um, what I would like to see is again from the engineer from the surveyor, whoever you know whoever's going to do this, what I would like to see is a profile of the wall as it's going up and going across because uh, obviously there's a the, there's a there's a step down in the wall but I'd like to see a profile of the wall as well as a cross section through the Fitzgerald's property going through the roadway and going down the other side I'd like to see that um, and I'd also like to see that if we're talking concrete walls these walls should probably be faced so the abutters aren't looking at and I don't think anybody really wants to look at just a concrete wall. There should be, there should be some sort of facing on this. So at least it is pleasant to look at. Um, you know, these, the, and it always depends on what the wall construction is going to be, whether it's a, whether it's a solid concrete, whether it's the, 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 you know, again, whether it's a Versa block or, or one of those big block walls, whatever it is, we'd kind of like to see that. So we know what people are going to be looking at. Um, from the residential area, I, knowing that these are going to be pretty big. Um, Ms. Fitzgerald, are you, uh, are you satisfied at this point? Because obviously there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a, a several, several other meetings and there's going to be several other renditions of this. Um, yeah, we appreciate your uh, we, concern. We, and we do, and we appreciate the information and I'm sorry that we're frustrated, but I, I'm hearing a lot about Wilson and a little piece of grass and I'm like, mm -hmm. I have trucks coming through my backyard. No, it's okay. absolutely it's absolutely understood. I appreciate you showing up for the meeting. I appreciate I appreciate the letter that you wrote, and I appreciate you letting me butcher it on uh, public TV like this. I think you did a great job. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank That's you. Thank you. At five o'clock at night, when the park's letting out, you just don't go anywhere. No, or eight o'clock in the morning when they're coming in, you just can't move out of this neighborhood. No, I absolutely, I, I, I understand. I've, uh, I've been up and down the road. Thank um, you very much. We appreciate you hearing us out. Thank you, Mr. Novak. Can you, uh, can you go back to the, the, to the, to unsharing the screen, please? All right. Uh, I'm going to open it back up to the board.
Does anybody have anything else they want to add? One quick question. Are we going to get a um, maintenance plan for all those detention ponds? Uh, an operations and maintenance and maintenance plan? Yes. Should be it. It should be required. I, I'm pretty sure that's required on the DEP. Um, they have. I know. I know it was required for the planning board as part of yeah. the site plan. That they, they did submit them. They, they're in, they're included in the in the drainage the stormwater report. Mm. I, um, I did review them. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Judy, anything yeah. else? Not. I can't think of anything else. Um, I guess the only question I might have really for you is just procedural one. How do you want me to coordinate with you around the procurement for the design review architect? And is it okay for me to go ahead and contact some of the town departments and just make sure we have their memos in your, your record, your files, try to make sure that they're remembering. Yeah, the that's what I, I, Mr. Galvin, do we have to have, do we have to have a vote on this to appoint her to do this? No. No, she's already been engaged, uh, so okay. I think you can just say yes. That you would like her assistance, and I'll work with Judy to facilitate yeah. the contacts uh, so that she has the ability to communicate here. Go for it, Judy. I appreciate it. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Um, Maybe, uh, Judy, did you want to recommend to the board a, a design a review engineer or a architect uh, that can do a review of the rendering, too? Yeah, I um, I think the architect I've had the best experience with overall is Davis Square Architects, Cliff Bomer. So if the board doesn't object, I'll ask Cliff for a quote. I think uh, we, we could do that, and then we could provide that to um, Mr. Lincoln and Ms. Attorney Marioni. And um, I, I, is the board in receipt of a rendering of the buildings yet? I had thought I saw... Uh, not necessarily a rendering, but I saw what you were asking for, um, like the balloon test. They did a. I, I saw a couple of. I saw a couple of plans that showed Home Depot and what was you know what it was going to look like uh, from say the Home Depot parking lot. I thought that's what you were talking about. Maybe not. Uh, if we're talking about uh, you know section views of the building and stuff like that, I haven't seen any architectural layouts. The board is entitled to you know elevation drawings sample floor plans, um, you know, specs for what the intended uh, landscaping is going to be. That's an integral part of design review. I mean, these are things um, that you're, you're really entitled to get so, so you understand the project that you're trying to permit. Uh, Rob? Yes. Um, Pat Brennan with Angry Engineers. Um, in the original application, there were renderings elevation views and architectural floor plans, but those okay. were for the former U-shaped buildings. So we need to I, see I don't, the new stuff. Yeah, I don't know if they've that. been, if uh, Mr. Lincoln's team has updated those with the, um, the, the new building layouts that they have. But they okay. did provide them in the original um, application package for the original design that they had. That's what okay. I thought, Pat. I think I've seen those too, but we need, we need a current plan. We need, we need current. Proposed change, Mr. Lincoln. Is that going to be? Uh, is that is that a problem at this point, or are you at that no. point? No, my you know it takes a little bit of time, but yep. you know with AutoCAD and everything, the architects work pretty fast. Um, okay. We have engaged a landscape architect that I use quite a bit out of Providence Traverse Landscape. Mm -hmm. um, so they're working on a landscape architectural plan. Ferguson's doing a photometric plan. So all that stuff should be pretty quick turn. Um, okay. I will, I do want to mention, you know, nobody's mentioned, uh, you know, we can do that at the next hearing. Um, but the whole Pond Street redesign, you know, because the, the town and certainly ourselves are aware of the traffic on Pond Street. Mm -hmm. but that's why all that was, um, was engineered and that's the intent to create that turn lane down there. So what uh, what kind of time do you think? I mean, if we if we set the if we set a continuance hearing for uh, for say thirty days from now, would you? Be yeah, I don't think to, I'd want it anymore. That should be plenty. Okay. Um, probably takes the engineers two or three weeks, and then that'll give us a little more time too for the the balance of the stuff we just talked about. Yeah, I do you want a Bob? Can we say can we schedule this out for two months 
or do we have to do this? Uh, do well, we have I to think if the, if the applicant is telling you that they could provide the information for us um, and we would want them to have it in so that Mr. Brennan had adequate time to review it. That's, um, that's you know, I would think, you know, if they if we can accommodate a July date, I think we should try to accommodate a July date. If they can't meet it, we can always move it again. But, mm -hmm. you know, subject to the board's availability, I think that probably makes sense. The only uh, thing I might add, Attorney Galvin, is yep. we need to make sure that we have the complete architectural submission for the architecture review. And and that's not I mean, he needs more than a couple of weeks to do that. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Okay. So maybe like six weeks, you know, end of July. Uh, the other thing I know the board could do, and it might make sense, particularly when Ms. Fitzgerald has raised a concern about, you know, her property is schedule a site visit. And, you know, that could be done anytime. And particularly when a butters are raising concerns, it's always good to walk the site mm -hmm. and to take a look at what the abutters are actually perceiving to be the problems. Right. What's the existing, what, what's the existing site look like right now? I mean, is it, it's, it's, it's just access roads to an open area, dirt road, like dirt area or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a dirt road that accesses kind of a small field up top. All right. So I can go, I can bring my geo and go full wheeling out there while we're, uh, while we're, while we're okay, cool. I like that. Thank you. I, I, well, I think what you ought to do is just like pick a pick a date with your board members tonight. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a Saturday morning, <laughs> and on a date that Mr. Lincoln is available, or, or Mr. Caparata, or who, uh, and maybe Mr. Novak, and he could show you maybe stake out where the roadway center line is going to be, and you'd have just a general idea where the buildings are going to be situated, and where the road is going to be situated, and the mm -hmm. clubhouse is going to be situated, and. I think it'd give you a real life experience as to what the neighbors are saying. And right. you'll probably have a better, per, better understanding of what the impact on the neighborhood is by doing that. It is that we're adding on what I'm getting nervous about is we are adding on a lot of work and not a lot of work, but we're, 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 we're putting a lot of pressure on um, outside forces, surveyors, engineers, architects, landscape architects, uh, photometric engineers, to kind of, you know, kind of to perform. And while I, while I agree that they should be able to, I'm almost worried that six weeks is coming, is going to cut it way too close because I think Pat needs more than more than a day or two to be able to, to, to review this. Um, that's a, that's the only reason why I wanted to say, it, you know, maybe do it eight weeks, but, it's in, in, it's really how everybody else feels about this. Um, if Mr. Lincoln, if you think that in six weeks, more or less in, in 30 days, you can have your engineers, architects, and your, your entire team in line with enough time to get it to Mr. Brennan so he can do a review um, and enough time for, for this board to be able to do our own personal review. Then I'm then then I think I think the the board would be willing to give you the six weeks, but I feel like six weeks isn't enough. Okay, I mean I'm I, I'm ready to go for the six weeks, and All also right. with Pat, it it's not like it's a hundred percent that's submitted. You know, two weeks before there's there, there's a lot of iterations back and forth between the engineers, so I'm I'm not uncomfortable with that time frame at all. All right. Uh, what I've got here is July 21st uh, seems to be a decent date. Um, board members, are you going to be available? I was looking at the 28th. Uh, that's great, but I'm being told that the 21st is 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 probably better. So, are you going to be around on the 21st? Yes. Okay. Um, do we have a Kim? Are you uh, are you listening? Yes, I'm listening. I'm, I'm assuming we have nothing else on that date. Correct. Okay. Uh, let's make this official at seven thirty. Does that uh, so we don't have to do seven o'clock? Right. All right. July twenty first, seven thirty. Uh, let's try not to schedule anything else for that date. Um, Rob, um, you want to pick a site visit? Yeah, I wanted. I'd, I'd like to pick a site visit date too. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, and I know we all work during the week, so a Saturday is preferable. Um, what's uh, what's everybody doing on the twentieth? Uh, see, that's an uh, again. Um, that's you know, a Monday. Yeah, that's the uh, actually that's a Sunday. Um, let's see. Nope. So. No, that's a Saturday. I do. It's a Saturday. Um, it's either the 20th or the 27th, but the thing is that we wanted to have uh, some survey stakes set for uh, basically building location. Um, that's already all done. That's all right. So the buildings have already been laid out? Yeah, buildings are all. There's plenty of stakes out there. So everybody can – I can – and it takes me a couple of days to get the surveyors out there to maybe uh, stake the wall that, you know, we're talking about. Okay. Um, yeah, that would, I mean, that would be nice to have it out there to see where the – you know, to see where, where the wall is going. If they, if they can't get to the wall location, even staking the back corners of, uh, of Miss, Fitzgerald, Miss Fitzgerald's property. Yeah. Uh, it's based, based on the plan. We can see that it's anywhere from four to 10 feet off of a property. Uh, and we know that it's going to be six feet above uh, natural grade. So mm -hmm. that's, we, you can kind of see where it's all going to be saying so, that's a, at a minimum, that would be, that would be nice. Um, so I'm looking at comfortably. I'm looking at either the 20th or the 27th. Does anybody have a problem with that? Is this a July, July 20th? This is June 20th. Couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah, and we can push it. We can push it out to the next month, so it's just prior to, you know, just prior. But again, a lot of these things kind of get, uh, they kind of get forgot. You know, these site meetings, the these meetings that are supposed to be at seven when we're usually at seven thirty. Uh, I'm just trying to get this taken care of relatively quickly and stay away from the beginning of July, because that's when a lot of people tend to go on vacay. Rob, could I throw a quick note in? Please do, sir. Um, the handbook recommends that the site visits be open to the public, that we not deliberate, um, and that we include the public in in it. And that's a, and that's typical for that's typical for all the for all site visits that we do, um, unless it un, unless it's for uh, non-specific purposes. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a specific right. purpose, Bob. Mr. Mr. Rosa, I. Uh, the applicant, this is private property, and the applicant has the right to say, yes, the public can be present or no, um, and the board can't obligate the applicant to allow the public to be on their private property. So, um, and remember, I think it also makes sense to ask permission from the Fitzgeralds if you want to look from their perspective, um, you know, at this thing for permission from them. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 it is not a deliberation session. It right. is literally an opportunity for Mr. Novak and Mr. Lincoln to just to kind of walk you out there, say, hey, look at this is where the road's going to be laid out. This is where the buildings are going to be laid out. And then for you to perceive that and then to see the Fitzgerald property and, you know, kind of envision it from there. So I, I would uh, only slightly disagree with Mr. Uh, with Mr. Hayes on this one, because um, I, I don't think they're, I don't think they're always open to the public. I think that's at the applicant's discretion. So let's look at it. Just day. to clarify, this was a, this is the recommendation in the in the handbook. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I wanted to refer this to Judy for her recommendations. In, in fairness to Attorney Galvin, I'll tell you, Bob, I have heard so many different town councils have a different opinion on this. Yeah. Yeah. So what the handbook represents is kind of what I've typically been told. Um, yeah. I defer to town council always on these. This is where I'm so grateful you have your town council here because I don't always have the luxury of working with, with a town council. I can just tell you, typically I hear it's safer for the board to post it. Bob, if you disagree, I defer to you. Uh, no, I, uh, posting the meeting, I think, is something that's a good idea, okay, that you're going to do a site visit. I just don't want to... I don't want the public to think that they can accompany the ZBA on a mm -hmm. site visit because that's really a personal matter to the applicant. And, sure. um, you know, some applicants say yes, some applicants say no. I've seen yeah. some applicants say yes, provided they sign a waiver. Yeah. Um, it's really the board's opportunity to view it. I, I would 100% agree with Judy that we should post the site visit in case you guys talk. 
Okay. Uh, but, you know, it's really just an opportunity to perceive, ask questions, and then come back to the meeting and discuss what you saw. And that's the appropriate way to proceed. Mr. Lincoln, uh, I would actually, in this situation, I would prefer that the public do not show up at this meeting because I know what happens. Questions start getting asked. And I get tired of saying, I'm sorry, I can't talk about it. I can't ask that. I, you know, I can't, I can't respond to that. That's usually the easiest thing is that, as Bob said, as Judy said, we post the meeting so everybody know that it's happening. Um, and again, your surveyor, engineer, yourself, um, you can walk us through the property. Is that a problem? No, I agree with that 100%. And I okay. would also offer if, if we want to try and put a neighborhood meeting together, you know, excluding ZBA members, but if neighbors want to contact me or have a private meeting, I'd be happy to do that. Is that, is that uh, Mr. Galvin, that's, that's okay, yeah. right? Okay. Perfectly okay. Um, That's very uh, helpful, I think, to yeah. neighbors that have concerns. Too very gracious. Thank you, Miss Fitzgerald. Are you still Are you still listening, Lisa Fitzgerald? Yes, I'm here. Would you, uh, if we chose a date to have a public uh, uh, a site meeting, rather not a public hearing, but a site meeting, um, would you have any problem with us stepping on stepping foot onto your property so we can see what you're going to be said, staring at? Come on down. I have no problem whatsoever. Okay. I just wanted to make, I just wanted to make sure uh, we will post it. We will post this site visit. Um, and anybody within the, anybody with the, with anybody on the board, uh, Mr. Rubel, if you want to come down, Pat, if you want to come down, um, I'd actually almost like you to come down, Pat. Um, is that, uh, would that be a problem? No, I should be able to make it. All right. Uh, so getting back to date, um, what are we thinking? Uh, again, we can do it sooner. It's, it's either sooner rather than later or maybe the weekend before, uh, before the 21st. Why don't you pick a date? The 20th works best for me. You know, I, I may be gone on the 27th. See, the, this is why the, the, I keep looking. I, I, I'd like to do this sooner rather than later. But again, this is the... It's kind of the flavor of everybody else, because um, again, if we if we set the meeting for the twenty first, uh, again, it's just it's too close. I feel like it's too close to to the fourth of July, because that's usually that first two weeks of July is when people are usually going on vacay. I'm not, because I never go on vacay. But <laughs> and it's everybody it's everybody else I need to concern myself with. So, what is that? What does everybody feel? And I'm, I'm, talking my board, I'm talking to my board members here. <clears throat> the 27th. 27th works. Mr. Lincoln, you were slightly opposed to the 27th? Well, if, I mean, worst case is if I'm not there, I think the engineers are probably more important than I am. Who is the current owner of the property right now? I am. You are the, you are the current owner of the property. Yes. Um, Mr. Galvin, does this, uh, is this sufficient for is, – is, is this yeah. – Ordered public meeting sufficient that the yep. record record owner is giving us permission to do this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. He's giving you permission to do it. So 27th? Just pick pick a time and a meeting place and have your site visit on that day. How's the 27th work for everybody else? What time, Rob? I had said, I'm first, I need to make sure that the date's going to work. No problem. Okay, we got that. Mr. Mr. Tansy, what do you got? Yeah, 27th. We're talking June. We're talking June 27th, yes. Uh, Mr. Rubel, you want to attend? That's fine. All right. Uh, get it over early in the morning. What do you want to say, 10 o'clock? Is that too early? No. Everybody good? Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll say 10 a.m. on June 27th. Meet at – what's the easiest place to meet at? Wilson Street. Yeah. Meet at the meet at Wilson Street, and then go and then from Wilson Street go go back down uh, pond to get onto the the dirt road that goes in. Because getting end, Wilson Street, we're all meeting in front of somebody's. Now at the end of Wilson Street, there's a gate 
that will be open and you can drive into the property. It's all well drained and sandy and you know, you can just walk down the uh, dirt access road towards uh, Pond Street. One of the, and that was, uh, again, correct me, that was 152, 152 Wilson? Mm -hmm. Dead yes, end? Sir. All right. Uh, how's everybody feel about that? 10 o'clock, Wilson Street? Yep. Mark your calendars. Can we get an email on that? Say again? From the secretary. Can we get an email on that from the secretary just to remind us? Kim? Yes, I will send one. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, what else we got? Um, meeting date. Pick a new meeting date. Yep. And again, I had, uh, I'm looking at the uh, continuance meeting. I'm looking at uh, the 21st, July 21st. Does that work for everybody? Does that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes. Most of the continue the meeting to July 21st. Well, hold on. Just making sure that everybody's okay with that, because again, that only gives you that only gives you about six weeks to get everything in. Uh, excuse me, less than six weeks to get everything in to Mr. Brennan so he can review. Yeah, I'm fine with that. You're fine with that. All right. So if uh, I've got a I've got a motion for continuance hearing on the 21st of July at uh, 7:30. Do we get a second? I'll second it. I got a second. Uh, all in favor, we need a roll call. Mr. Baker? Yes. Myself is yes. Uh, Mr. Tanzi? Yes. And Mr. Haynes? Yes. That's a 4-0 that's a vote. Um, so we've got, uh, we've got it going. Um, anything else we want we, we to talk about? Yeah. Uh, Just, uh, make, make sure you note your uh, date with... Uh, uh, Ms. Barrett, too. You have your um, meeting 30th. with her as well on the 30th of June. Yep. <clears throat> all right. Uh, and again, just Kim, if you can do me a favor and just uh, put this all together in a, in a general email for the board and just get it out to everybody, that uh, that would be super helpful. Rob, well, do we need a do we need to make a motion for the 27th? For, for the site no. visit? No, for the you're not visit? taking a vote on it. No, you're you're all set with that. A motion to continue the meeting would be a, you've done your roll call vote for that, so you just you've scheduled your visit for the twenty seventh. There's no vote needed. Okay. Perfect. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, um, one thing we didn't discuss is um, not sending the. Um, traffic study out to Gillen Associates that mm -hmm. usually done our um, review of the traffic study. Yep. And I'm wondering if with all this fill, if the um, study should include the truck traffic and the impacts that um, construction of the site would have. During, um, during construction. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of, I mean, we're going to be pu pulling in trailers, I would imagine. For, oh, yeah. For, mm -hmm. for, for, you know, a site like this. And, um, you know, there's a lot going on out there. We we got the Home Depot, we've got the Wendy's going, we've got a lot of development, um, you know, projects that have been approved uh, lately in the, in the area. And there's a lot going on with that. Um, Mr. Tansy, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to save this concern uh, for the site walk. I'm assuming that uh, whoever is going to be uh, representing Shingle Mill will have some construction knowledge and will be able to respond to a question like that while we're on site. Because it, by the time we get out there and you realize that the volume of fill is going to be about two feet over your head, that's when people are really going to start to 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 make a, you know, to 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 really see things. So that I would like to I would like to take that up when we're on site. Is that is that okay? That's fine. I, I I'd also it. tell you, Miss, Mr. Brennan is going to make sure that Gillen, when they give you a scope, will look at, make sure that's included anyway. So, he'll, he, Mr. Brennan will handle that. Yeah. All right. I think we've uh, I think we've covered all our bases tonight. Um, Mr. Galvin, would you agree? Yes, and all you need to do is a motion to adjourn with a roll call vote, and you're 
you've concluded your business. I would entertain a motion to motion. To, I got a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. I got a second. Roll call, Mr. Baker. Yes. Myself. Yes. Uh, Mr. Tansy. Yes. Mr. Haynes. Yes.